Hi, in this practical video, I'm going to demonstrate the functionality of a variable AC supply, often called a variac. Over here, I have a variac. It's quite commonly recognized by this knob on the top, which you can rotate. This is a variable transformer, and this particular one is an auto transformer. Now, in the setup, I have my load, which is connected to the output of the variac. So a variac has both an input and an output. On the input side, I'm plugging directly into the mains. That is my utility. So I'm plugging it into the mains, the electricity, your supply from your console or whatever. And at the same time, I'm measuring my input with this multimeter over here. And at the moment, the voltage is 226 volts, which is being fed into the variable AC supply. Now on the output, I have a globe. I'm using an incandescent globe because it is quite easy to dim it and show how the brightness changes as I adjust the voltage across the terminals. Now on the output, I also have a meter which is measuring across my load. So this is my load voltage and this is my supply voltage. I've already turned the variable AC supply on and I'm going to rotate it. Notice that the input voltage over here is not changing. That is the supply voltage which is fed to the primary winding of this variable transformer. Notice that it stays at 226 volts. Moving it back and forward, it doesn't actually change the input voltage. But look at the output voltage. As I rotate it, as you can see, there's a scale here. And as I climb up the scale, Look, I'm almost at 100 volts. There my meter is showing it to me over here, 98.9 volts. Look at the globe. The globe is beginning to light up. And if I go to 150, notice that the voltage across the load is now at, well, in this case, 140. But look at the supply. It's still 226. So what I'm able to do is vary the voltage across my load. Look at the brightness of that globe. Let's go to 200 volts. All right, I'm here at 200 volts. So I've got 199 volts on my meter. Notice how bright the tungsten coil is when the voltage is 199 volts. And I'm now going to take it to 230 volts. So what I've been able to do here is vary the voltage across my load. And by varying the voltage, I'm changing the output power at my load. Notice that the input is still the same, 226 volts. But look at the output, it's 230 volts. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to go to 240 volts. Notice that the variac is allowing me to exceed what is being inputted into the variable supply. Notice that the input is still 226 volts while the output is now above that. So that means that the coil is extended inside here and I will open it and show it to you. So here we can see the operation of the variable supply. This is a variac and there we go. I'm slowly reducing it. Look at the voltage reducing and even when I take it to zero, the supply is still 226 volts. So by turning this knob, I can control the output voltage and hence, in this case, the output power, which is very useful in electrical applications. I'm now going to open it up and show you what's inside and then I'll show you a diagram. Right now, I'm going to unplug everything. So I've unplugged the supply. Now on this unit, there are a few screws on the side which I need to remove. And in this case, I also need to loosen the knob in order to get the cover off. Right, so this is what is inside the unit. We have all these windings. You can see these copper turns, hundreds of them. And it is very heavy. This is heavy because there's a core inside you, a ferrous material. And these windings are traveling around that to create flux. Now, over here, this is where the knob was. So the knob was sitting there and obviously I've loosened it. But when I turned it, it would do this. So over here, we've got a slider. But I want to show you a side view. Now, if you look at that, that's what I want to bring your attention to. If you look closely, you might see there's a piece of carbon here. We sometimes call this carbon brush and I'm going to lift it slightly. You can see that it's resting on the top of the windings. 
Notice how the windings are available here for this brush to move past and that is what allows us to vary the output voltage which also means that the slider is electrically connected there it is there's the terminal there it comes to the output and I'm going to show you that now I have a diagram of what I had set up I had an input this was from the mains in my case it was about 226 volts that didn't change so that was the voltage across the supply which was fed into this auto transformer then on the output I had that tungsten globe so that was my load and over here we had a meter and the meter was measuring from about 1.4 all the way to 240 volts so what was happening is the input was fixed but the output was changing the voltage as I was rotating that knob which in effect was moving the slider across the windings and by moving the slider across the windings I was varying the output voltage it is AC so it is a sine wave in this case and I varied it from 1.4 volts which was a very small amount of turns all the way up to in my case I only went up to 240 volts notice that in the experiment that I showed I went higher then the input voltage the input was 226 but I was able to get 240 volts and I could have actually gotten more turning the knob even further so that is why we have these additional windings here so the beauty of most variax is that it can give you the supply voltage and more which is very useful for electrical circuits so let's quickly talk about the terminals the input is over here in this case I had my neutral over there and my live over there notice how this wire is common to both the input and the output because this is an auto transformer there is no isolation here usually we would have one core and winding and then another winding and they are galvanically isolated but magnetically coupled but then they are still electrically isolated over here they are not electrically isolated so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you the terminals on the Variac right I'm going to begin with the plug this is the plug that plugs into the mains now as you can see I've got a live and a neutral and the wire feeds into here there we can see I've got the AC input notice there's my neutral and there's my live in South Africa we use brown for live and blue for neutral in your country it would be different it might even be red and black now I'm going to flip this over to show you what's happening on the inside can you see there's a link between that terminal and that terminal now I'll show you the other side so on the bottom it was AC input on the top it was AC output so this is the output after I vary the voltage but look at that that terminal and that terminal are the same wire now going back to my diagram there's my AC input live and neutral notice that that is the same wire from the input of the neutral to the output and in this case still the neutral look at that it is the same wire so on the Variac it's exactly like that now let's have a look at the other wires so starting with the AC input my 226 volts in my case is inputted over here between these two terminals was 226 volts which I was measuring with this small meter now let's follow this live wire so there it is this black wire over here and I'm turning this sideways and there it is soldered onto the winding but it's not the beginning or the end of the winding let's have a look at the winding there seems to be either an end point or a beginning point in this case this is the beginning of the winding and this is the end of the winding so if I wanted to measure the total resistance from beginning to end I would measure from there to there so this winding starts here goes all the way around and ends over there I can actually see the starting point over there but let's get back to this live wire notice the live wire goes there and all the way to here and it's soldered about three-fifths the way because look that is the beginning all the way around to about there so there's just this portion that is left out maybe even five-sixths so what I want to bring to your attention is that the live wire is soldered to a point 
in the total winding. Notice that the coil is going there and round and then the other side of that wire is going this way and round towards that side. Right, so getting back to the diagram again, there's the live wire soldered directly into the winding. Look, here are the windings all the way and there is the live wire, not right at the end, somewhere over here, allowing for further windings which is what allows me to vary the voltage past the input voltage. So that is this live wire over here soldered directly into the winding but not at the end. If it was soldered directly at the end then your variac would only be able to give you a maximum voltage of whatever the input was. So in my case the input was 226. If this live wire was soldered directly to there then my output, maximum output on my load would also be 226. But in the case of this variac it was soldered over here and this additional winding allows me to have that extra voltage higher than the supply. When I was using the Variac, did you notice that I could exceed the voltage of the input? Remember that the input was 226, but I got to 240. And how that works is over here, this is the end of the input winding, but notice that I can carry on going. These are the windings that are additional, allowing me to have that additional voltage more than the supply. How does it do that? Well, remember that there's a core running through the middle here and it shares that flux. So more flux can travel through more windings, which means more voltage. There we can see I can extend the travel past the point of the input winding. Right, now let's go back to this neutral wire over here. Remember that I said the neutral of the input and the neutral of the output are the same wire. But that neutral still needs to be connected to this winding. There's the neutral from input to output, but notice it is the beginning of the winding. So there's the neutral input. So it's that one at the bottom. Remember it is shorted to the output, but look at this wire here. There's a wire here. Look at this copper wire traveling here right to the beginning of the winding. That marks the start of the winding on this auto transformer. So that's turn one. Turn number two, three, four, all the way to the final turn. Now let's have a look at the circuit that makes the slider. Right, back to the diagram, we can see that the output is the neutral, but look at this, the slider moves along the winding. So this is electrically connected to this winding, but in my case, it has a copper brush. So there's the AC output. This is the voltage that was varying, and I was showing it on this meter, and the light was connected across these terminals. There's the neutral. As I said, it's the same wire input from the AC mains to the output. This one over here is connected to this red wire. Look at it going there, there into the slider, into the knob area. Look at this, this is a copper plate going into there, onto this. This is all metallic, so it is one circuit. So I understand that it doesn't quite look like one wire, so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to use a multimeter set to ohms, and I'm going to quickly show you, and I short them out together, the leads, look at that, 0.2 ohms. I can also use continuity, listen to the noise. The buzzer and the zeros are telling me it's a dead short. So I'm going to put that on the output, which is this red wire over here. So I'm going to put my lead in there and I'm actually going to close it. So look at that. That's the output. So this is the same point, as you can see. Look at my meter, zeros. And if I follow the red wire to there, that's the same wire. There, same wire. It is electrically connected to this platform over here. Same wire to this same connection and then to this carbon brush over there, look at that, same. Even if I take a resistance measurement, it should still be 0.2. There we go, 0.2 on the meter. So even though I move this, I'm not changing my ohms by moving this. What's happening is where I will get a change in resistance is the distance from there to there that will change the resistance. Now I'll explain what I mean now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect my multimeter across the output. Right, so there's my multimeter and the output is telling me it's 2 ohms. Now I'm going to turn this all the way to the beginning. Look at the ohms. 
0.3. Why? Because it's a dead short. Looking at it on the diagram, I've got my multimeter here. I'm measuring ohms. So I'm measuring between there and here. So look what I've done. I've moved my slider right to the bottom. So if my slider is now sitting there, look what I'm measuring. If I'm measuring ohms, I'm measuring there, there, there. That is a short circuit. Look at that. There are hardly any windings for me to go through. That is why I get a very low resistance. But as I move the slider up on the output side, my resistance should increase along its path. So I'm going to do that. Look at the resistance. Look at it climbing. But look, if I go all the way to about there, look, 4,3 ohms. And if I go past there, all the way to the end of the winding, look at that, 5.5 ohms. So that represents the entire resistance from the beginning of the winding all the way to the end of the winding. So there we go, 5.6. Okay, it's actually grown a bit, 5.5, 5.0. 5 but as I said, just some dirt on that brush. It also depends how hard I press this brush onto the winding. If I clean this up with a contact cleaner, I might find that it's more stable. Now, here's the million dollar question. Now, if I want to measure the resistance of the input winding, what do you think it would be? Would it be more than 5.4 or would it be less than 5.4? Let's measure it and find out. Just before we do, let's see if we can predict the outcome. I've been working on the output. I've moved the slider all the way to the top and I had 5.4 ohms or thereabout. Notice that I had to go through all these windings for my resistance measurement because I turned the slider all the way to the end. So I got 5.4 ohms. But the input is fixed. So when I measure the resistance, it should be a fixed amount but look, it's not all the windings. So in my opinion, the, the resistance on the input would have to be less than 5.4 ohms. And it would be probably about 15 or so percent less than the output when the slider is at the end of the winding. Right, so now I'm going to measure at the input. So I'm just going to use crocodile leads. And there, that's the input. See there, input. So I've just got two crocodile leads there. And there's the resistance, 4,7 ohms. Now, if I turn the slider, will the resistance change? Now, according to our diagram, the input is fixed. The input is not changing. The only place I'm making a change is on the output. So if I move the slider up or down, will this resistance change? It should not change because I have not changed the number of windings on the input. If I move the slider up and down, I'm only changing the number of windings that the output has, not what the input has. The input is remaining the same. Right, so there's the resistance across the input and I'm going to turn the slider. Look at that. It doesn't matter what I do to the slider, it doesn't change the input resistance as we predicted. Now the last resistance measurement I'm going to show is what happens if I wanted to measure the resistance between that terminal and that terminal? So I'm measuring the resistance from the output to the input, but the live side. Now, when I adjust the slider, look, the resistance is changing, but that's not what's important here. What's important is, do you notice that the resistance is very low? 2.6 and if I go over there, 4.5. Why is that important? Because this is an auto transformer and it's the same windings, which means there is no isolation here. That means that there is a significant shock hazard when you're working with a variac because you are actually touching the mains. You're directly connected to the mains apart from a few windings. So auto transformers, while very useful, do not offer that electrical isolation. So you've got to be very careful with them. Before I close this, I'm going to quickly clean the windings here. I'm just using a contact spray and I just spray it on like that. And I take a cloth and I just wipe. You can see how it's cleaning the excess carbon that has built up over the years. This will make it have a more stable output. Right, so I'm going to close this and show you one last thing that people often don't realize. 
Right, so this very last point, I have to energize the variac. So I've connected the supply to the mains. There is the output of the variac. It's very low. Look, it's on zero and it says 1.9 volts. Notice that as I turn this, you might even notice that the voltage is actually more stable now since I've cleaned it with that contact cleaner. Right, so as I said, I'm going to show you one last thing. It, look, the scale says 260, but my meter says 239. But can I carry on turning this? Yes. Look at that. I'm now at the end. I don't know if you can hear the knock. And look, that is the maximum that I can get out of this variac, which is quite close to what it says on the scale here, 260 volts. Look at that, 260. Right, so what am I trying to show you? I'm trying to show you that with variacs, we can't always trust the graduated scale. Because look at that. I'm at the end, look at that. But my meter says 1.4, but there it says 210. And the reason for that is sometimes these knobs get loose. Look at that. I'm turning it, but nothing's happening over here because I'm actually turning just the top knob. Someone hasn't tightened it tight enough or someone has over tightened it and scratched and someone has stripped the knob. So this is a problem on Variax. And this is why we always use a voltmeter on the output. We don't trust the scale here. We trust the voltmeter. If I want to get to 100 volts, I turn until I see 100 volts. So that is 100 volts. Not that, that says 185 volts. But look at the meter. So always trust your meter rather than the scale on the Variac. Thanks for watching and cheers.